Good morning, everybody. It is lovely to see everybody here this morning. It's lovely being back in church again. Good morning as we join together here in Strain, either in person or online as we worship together. Uh, just to be a reminder, as you're sitting, if you wish to take your mask off, you can do so. We wear our face masks as we enter and leave the building and also as we sing. But while we are seated, we are permitted now to take them off if we wish. So if that helps, feel free to, to take it off for a while. But welcome this morning as we gather as God's people here in this place to praise and to worship him, to look at his word together. A um, couple of announcements just to run through um, beforehand. Hopefully you've seen them on the screen as you come in. So we are in half-term week. I'm sure the children are all very disappointed about that and our teachers as well. Um, so the activities are slightly lighter this week. Craft Pass is on tomorrow. We've got Football Fellowship on on Wednesday, Balmanon on Thursday, and Youth Fellowship starts back next Sunday, just as a wee preliminary announcement. So for our young people, get that in your diary now, just so that you're here. And I've got a couple of other dates to, to hold on to in your heads as well. Our small groups will be starting again on the last week of the month. So that will be Wednesday the 23rd of February and Friday the 25th. Um, It'll be Wednesday, it'll be the evening, Friday it'll be the lunchtime, and we're starting upon a new topic, so we're going to start and study the topic of heaven. So if you'd like to come along on Wednesday night or on Friday lunchtime, you're very welcome. If you'd like to know a bit more about that, then have a chat with me afterwards. Uh, It'd be lovely to be able to do that. And then just to say that our drop-off this month will be on Thursday the 24th of February, again from 10 till 12. And for this month, our organization, our mission project is Open Doors. I wonder how many people remember reading the book God's Smuggler by Brother Andrew whenever a few years ago. I remember reading it as a teenager uh, and reading the story of what he did. Open Doors does so much now. Um, what they're involved in is incredible. Just to give you a little taster, if you, if you were to go onto the website, if, you, if you're savvy with um, the internet and you went on and had a little look, you'd see there's multiple topics of projects that they're involved with. But one of them is called Secret Child. And what they do is they've been running camps in Myanmar to help children. So this past year, they've had camps for more than 400 children, helping them and helping them with their faith and teaching them about God. In Nigeria, they have helped... 453 widows with support to the education of their children with school fees. In Bangladesh, they have distributed 15,000 children's Bibles. And as well as that, they are running Sunday schools and providing Sunday school resources for children in persecuted countries and in difficult places right the way around the world. Open Doors is not smuggling Bibles any longer. It's about so and about helping others to learn about God. So that's our mission um, project for this month. So if you'd like to drop something off for Open Doors, you can do that on Thursday the 24th of February. We'll have a few more details next week as well. Just a reminder as well that tea and coffee is available after the service. So um, if you're coming out for tea and coffee again, just take your time. We'll give each other a little bit of space as we go out. Um, And then as we sit down, just to enjoy the the fellowship and the company together. Those are all the announcements that I'm going to make at this stage. But I do have a note of a few birthdays. So some of these folks are here. Some of them are maybe watching online or we'll hear about it later on. But the birthdays that I have a note of for this incoming week, um, we have birthday for Francis Wallace for Lexi Brown, for Caitlin Coffey, Coffey, and for Dorothy Boyle as well. Boyle as well, sorry. See my head this morning. Um, apologies. Um, but we've also got the note that we have a couple in the church who this incoming week will be c- celebrating 62 years of being wed together. So congratulations to Florence and David Beatty on 62 years. Let's pause. Yeah, give them a round of applause. (laughs) Long service medal, Florence, yeah? Let's pause and let's pray together.
Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you that as a church family, we do come together. We worship together. We laugh together. We cry together. Father, there's so many things that we, we, we do as, as a family, because we are. We are your family in this place. Father, this morning for Francis and for Lexi, uh, for Caitlin and for Dorothy, thank you for birthdays. For Florence and David for this incoming week, thank you for the big celebration of the wedding anniversary. Lord, just to be able to do these things, we are so grateful. And we thank you for our folks as they're spread out amongst this country. And Lord, wherever they are, that they would know your peace and your blessing. And that this week, that you very much be with them. So Lord, thank you. And Lord, as we come to worship you now, we just ask that you would calm and still our hearts. That we would know that we gather here in your name to worship you, the living God. And Lord, as we do so, as we use songs, as we use our organ, as we use videos to praise and to worship you, that you would just speak to us, that you would draw alongside us, that as we sing and praise you, it would declare who you are. So Father, thank you for this morning. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I don't know if you receive from PCI um, the daily prayer reminders that come out, and they always give a couple of topics for prayer. But this morning, one of the things that they're saying, and it's so appropriate, is declaring God's praise. So they ask us to pray and ask that God's spirit of praise would be amongst his people today as they meet together to worship. And they give us this verse. So let's use this verse as our call to worship. This is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. God calls us. God love us, loves us. God chose us. That's why we gather in this place today to worship and to praise him. I'm going to invite you to, to put on your face masks. I'm going to invite you as well at this point to stand. Um, we're going to, we have a video to start with. It starts very quickly, so that's what I'm going to ask you now to, to please stand so that you're ready. Um, apologies that it does start so quick. I've had a few technical issues. There's been a few updates to bits and pieces of software, and it's given me a bit of a headache this week, but we're going to go with it, aren't we? Let's try. So we're going to start off with a piece I'm sure you know so well called Come People of the Risen King. Let's worship God.
Let us pray. Father, thank you this morning that we rejoice. Thank you, Father, this morning that we can lift our eyes to you because of your unchanging love. Father, it's your love which gathers us here. It's your love which has washed us clean of our sin. It's our love which we want other it's your love which we want other people to see, to realize how much you care for them. Lord, this morning is not about us, but this morning is about you and about what you have done for each one of us. Thank you that we can come. Thank you that we can rejoice. Thank you that we can celebrate because of your love. Lord, forgive us that so often we make it about ourselves. Forgive us that so often we we just think about what we want. We don't actually think about the true reason about you and your love and all that you have done for us through your son Jesus Lord this morning just help us to refocus again upon you help us to see you help us to set aside the things of this world and just turn our eyes towards you help us to see your love Father thank you And continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you? Everybody well? Yeah? Got a question for you. I would never have questions, sure I wouldn't. What do you prefer? A book or a movie? Who likes a book? Who enjoys reading? Not very many hands. Adults, do you enjoy a good book? Boys and girls, who likes a movie? Yeah. We like to tell stories in different ways, don't we? But here, let me ask you another question. I wonder, have you ever been reading a book or watching a movie and something happens which is completely unexpected? There's a real twist in the story which you don't expect. Does that ever happen? Sometimes. Yeah. Can I tell you what one of my favorite sets of movies are? Can I? You'd never guess this. Real twist in it. But I love Star Wars. Anybody else here like Star Wars? Yeah. I have to admit to you, boys and girls, it it was a real shock to me whenever I learned that Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. And that was a real twist. And you really start to wonder about the story sometimes. And, you know, there's all sorts of stories that have twists in them. And you know what, boys and girls? Some of the stories that Jesus tells in the Bible, there's a twist in the story, or there's a part of the story that we do not expect And it maybe throws us sometimes. It maybe makes us think of things in a completely different way. And this morning as you go out to Sunday school, boys and girls, you're going to hear about one of those stories. Now, Jesus told a story or a parable, and it has lots of different titles. Some people call it the parable of the prodigal son. Some people call it the story of the lost son. Some people call it the story of the two sons. Because the whole story has two boys in it. But in that story, God really surprises us. And God doesn't do what we expect. Or the father in that story doesn't do what we expect. 
And maybe it leaves some people scratching their heads. But as you're going to learn this morning, boys and girls, that story is all about how no matter what we do, God loves us and God cares for us and God is always there for us. Boys and girls, do you ever get told off? Do you ever get told, that's naughty, you shouldn't do that? Or that was wrong? You know, the reason that we get told that is because our mums and dads and our grannies and grandas, they love us. And they want us to be the best people that we can be. Well, you know what? God loves you. And God wants you to, to love him just as much as he loves you. And he wants you to follow him. And he wants to show you how to show that love to others. So sometimes, yeah, we do things that are wrong. And God tells us off. But God always loves us. And you're going to hear that story this morning. And it's got a really unexpected twist in it. And it's the story of the prodigal son or the lost son. So are you excited? Brilliant. Well, I need your help before you can do that. Before you can go out in here. I need your help to sing. So again, it's the same thing with the video because it starts really quickly. So face masks on. On your feet. And what we are going to sing right now is called Love the Lord Your God. And I do warn you, it starts very quickly. Boys and girls, Sunday school time. Come on ahead. Have fun. Let us again just come and still our hearts before God. Let's take a moment of silence just to surrender to God. Anything which is troubling us this morning, anything which is weighing us down, let's just hand that over to him. And then let's come together and prayer together as we pray about our worlds, about our town, about our church. Let's pray.
Father, we once again thank you this morning that we can come into your presence to talk to you. We thank you, Father, that there are no barriers stopping us from speaking to you either from the quiet of our hearts or out loud with our voices declaring what troubles us, what excites us, what weighs us down. And Lord, thank you that we can hand it all over to you, that you understand, that you know, that you lift that burden from us. And as we share that burden with you, as we hand it over to you, we know, Father, that you will help us through whatever lies ahead. Father, you are a great, strong, a mighty, our faithful God, our constant companion. Lord, we thank you. Lord, it's so good to see our boys and girls this morning. It's so good to see them going out to Sunday school. And we thank you for our teachers who will teach them about you and about your love. And as I hear the story this morning about the lost son and how his father forgave him, how his father threw his arms around him, Lord, how they will hear about how much you love them. And Lord, despite everything that they might have done, how you just accept them for who they are and ask them to come to you. Father, we we give our children over to you and just ask that they would come to put their faith and trust in you that they would surrender themselves into your arms. Lord, it's just so good that our different activities in church have started again, and we thank you for that. Lord, it's been a challenging time, and it's been difficult as we have worked through all the different restrictions and lockdowns, but thank you that we are able to worship you and to praise you. Thank you that we can meet during the week. Thank you that we have those practical outreaches and ministries of craft class, how we, the guys can get together for football and fellowship, how our, our young people get together for BB and GB. Lord, just for every aspect of church life, thank you. We forget at times, Father, how blessed we are. We forget how privileged it is to, to be able to openly worship you. We forget about those who have to meet in secret still. And we do remember our brothers and sisters who face that persecution. Lord, Russia is one of those countries which for many years has been difficult. And now, Lord, with everything that's going on with Russia and Ukraine, we fear for what might happen. And we watch with bated breath as we see what is going to go on there. Lord, we pray for that situation. We pray for peace and calm. We pray for your love into that. That where there is hatred, where there is bitterness, that it would be replaced with your love. Where there is persecution, that there be ease of persecution. Where there is opportunity, Father, those who love you and know you can share your love. We just pray for those leaders who are trying to work through that situation, that you would give them wisdom and understanding and just be near to them. Lord, for our town, we pray for your love to flow through this place. We really want to see this town transformed for you. And Lord, in recent days, there has been, in different churches, new ministers and pastors installed. Some have gone, some have come. And Lord, there's just that change in our town. Lord, we pray with that change that your word would come. With that change, it would be a, a, a thirst of people to, to hear about you, to know about you. Lord, just that you would move in this place. Lord, for those who have faithfully served you through ministry, we thank you. And for those who step back to retire, Lord, that you would just bless them now in this time. That it would be a time for them of refreshment again, a time of renewing. And that as you refresh and renew them, Father, and as those ministers who retire assist us who are still at host, that you would use them as well in a mighty way. Lord, we are all part of your family. You've called us all to serve you with the gifts and talents that you have given us. So, Lord, help us to do that. Lord, this morning we thank you for your words. This morning we thank you for the challenges that it will bring to us. 
We ask that you would help us to hear those challenges, that we would be ready for them, that we would be prepared, and that as we leave this place today, that we would challenge ourselves with what we're doing for you. So Lord, thank you. And continue with us now and pray in Christ's name. And Lord, for your blessings upon us, for your goodness to us, we thank you. For the gifts and offerings we've been able to bring to you this morning, we thank you. We ask that you would take them and use them to your glory and to your honour to grow in your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to God's word this morning. Uh, we started a series in Isaiah, so we're going to go back into Isaiah again. So I'm going to ask you to turn to Isaiah chapter 6. The whole chapter, it's not a long chapter, it's only 13 verses long. It's going to come up on the screen. Or if you want to, to read along with, with a Bible or device you've got with you, or if you just simply want to listen to God's words, then let's hear what it says. So this is Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. They were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphims flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, This has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of the people calloused, Make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, For how long, Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitants, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent away, far away, and the land is utterly forsaken. Though a tenth of the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terabith and the oak, stump, oak leaf stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed in the land. We ask God to bless this reading of his word. I asked the boys and girls, and I included yourselves, if you prefer books, reading a book, are watching a movie. And I said to the boys and girls about having a twist in the tale. But I wonder, have you ever been reading a book, or have you ever been watching a movie or a series, and it starts off in such a strange and unusual way, and you really do wonder at times, what is going on? We've jumped into the middle of something, and I don't know where it's come from, where it started, or what's happening. And then maybe in that you see all of a sudden the sign which says 24 hours later. Doesn't want to go now. Nah, don't worry. If it goes, it goes. Oh, here we go. You see that sign saying 24 hours earlier. And suddenly you realize, ah, the story started a wee while ago. And we've, we've seen like a, a snapshot. And now we're going back to the start. This is a bit like Isaiah chapter 6. As we have read through the start of Isaiah, if you go to the very start of it, 
It says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1, The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And then we start to see some of those visions. But then chapter 6 brings us back to the beginning. So what we've got to get in our heads, first of all, is God has been talking to Isaiah. God has been revealing things to him, a vision, a dream. And this is what we are getting recounted to us. This is what we're getting told to us. But now we're seeing the very start. What was the beginning? How was Isaiah called? What was the lead up to this very substantial book or letter that we have in the Old Testament? Because there's so much in Isaiah. And you do sometimes wonder, how did we get there? It starts off with this. I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the trail of his robe filled the temple. When it says Lord there, that is God. It's the the old Hebrew name, Yahweh. So God shows himself to Isaiah in a dream. And God shows what he is doing, seated on the throne that's in heaven, and the train filling the temple. Picture, could you imagine seeing God seated on a throne? Could you imagine seeing his, his, his robe in the temple? And it goes on to say about the smoke. And, 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 the, and whenever the temple was built, whenever the tabernacle was built as well, God showed his presence with smoke and with fire. God is showing Isaiah that despite everything that's going on, he's still there. God is still in heaven, and God's his presence is still in the temple. You know, it's actually quite sad that it only shows that God's presence is in the temple. Because God created the world to be filled with him. God made it that the whole world would be his temple but then we corrupted it. Sin comes into the world. Adam and Eve turn their back on God. They're thrown out of the Garden of Eden. They're barred from it. And there's a barrier starts to come in between us and God. But God wants to correct that. And he gave his people the tabernacle, and then the temple is built, a place where they can meet with God. A place where they can see and feel his presence. A place where they can come and worship him. And in that place there is the presence of God. When you see people shout what they say at one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is glory. Servants are talking about that ideal. The whole world filled with his glory. But I wonder if those words, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty, do they sound familiar? If you've read Revelation, they will do. Because in Revelation chapter 4, those same words are quoted. As the holy beings sing and say to one another, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. People surrounding Isaiah have forgotten about their holy God. They have turned their back on God. And disaster is on its way. Isaiah is the one who brings the news of that disaster, the news of that judgment. He's the one who will declare to them what is going to happen. But as Isaiah stands there and as he listens to that, those voices, as he listens to them saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It talks about how at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. God's presence is there. And Isaiah cries out, Woe to me! I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips and I live among the people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. In that vision, Isaiah thinks, this is the end for me. I've seen God, and I am not 
worthy. I am not right. Isaiah knows that there's something wrong with his life. He knows that there is sin in his life. He knows that he is in trouble. I mean, to see the Lord meant judgment. To see God meant that you were no longer of this earth. To see God meant that you had passed from this earth into eternity. And Isaiah realized that would mean judgments. And you can feel the dread, the panic. You can feel how he feels the weight of his sin upon his shoulders. And how he is in fear. Isaiah fears that he will be judged. But then something amazing happens. Something incredible happens. It says that one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Isaiah was given forgiveness. Now at that point Isaiah wasn't asking for it. Isaiah didn't realize that forgiveness could be offered to him. But yet forgiveness was freely given to him. Isaiah could have ran away from the seraphim as it came towards him. He could have feared it, thinking what's going to happen. But he didn't. He stood there. And the servant comes down and touches that coal against his lips. It's a live coal. It's red hot. It would have burnt him, but it doesn't. I wonder if anyone here has actually ever tried to grab a coal. Anyone here been brave enough to try and walk over hot coals at any stage? Or seen it being done? And you sort of wonder how that happens. and it, it's, it's an illusion. But for a hot coal to touch you, it hurts. For a hot coal to touch you, it damages you. And yet this coal touches Isaiah. And he's not damaged. He's not hurt. But he's forgiven. And this is reflecting forward to what is coming. It's reflecting forward to the, the promise which comes in Isaiah of one who will come, who will save us and transform us. It's an image of God's forgiveness through Christ. Isaiah didn't do anything to deserve that forgiveness. He didn't do anything to earn that forgiveness. But that forgiveness came freely to him. He didn't run away. He stood there and he accepted it. And that was the beginning of Isaiah's journey with God. He had to be made right so that God would then use him. And it's the same for us. No matter what age we are in life, in physical life right now, we also have a spiritual age. We have that point whenever we realize that we need God and we open the door of our hearts and we let him in. We call it being born again. We call it being saved. We call it being forgiven. We call it different things. We call it having personal faith. But that's the starting point for us in our life with God. By accepting what he has done for us through Christ. To give you that forgiveness, did you run away from him? And have you not as yet turned back to him again? Or I wonder, have you accepted that? Did you stand there? Did you accept his forgiveness? But now you're not quite sure where to go. Now maybe you're a bit overwhelmed by the fact that God loves you so much that he gave you his son to forgive your sins. I'm sure Isaiah had that overwhelming feeling. I'm sure as Isaiah stood there and that seraphim in his vision touched his lips, he wondered what was coming next. I'm sure he was moved. And we should be moved when we think about what God has done for us. We shouldn't be unfazed by God's love. Because we don't deserve that love. We've done nothing which makes us worthy of it. But yet it is freely given to us. Yet we can have it. We don't do anything. We just stand there and accept it. 
But accept as well that whenever you take that love, you will be changed. And Isaiah was changed. Up until that point, he said that he was a person of unclean lips, living in a land of people of unclean lips. That's why that servant symbolically touches his lips, cleanses it with fire, cleanses it with the heat of the coal to say, you are clean. And then God issued a call. Then God says, and who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Now that call gets answered. Isaiah says, here I am, send me. I mean, how scary must that be to accept that call? But here's the thing about it. Isaiah's not forced. Nobody's standing behind him with another hot poker or another hot coal pushing him in the back, saying, right, you jump forward. Nobody's got his arm up his back, twisting it, saying, you have to do this. God issued a call, and Isaiah answered it freely. God doesn't force any of us. God asks us if we are willing to serve him. Are we willing to get involved? Are we willing to set aside our own agendas and follow what he wants us to do? He doesn't force us. He doesn't make us. He asks us and invites us. But here's the thing. We should want to be involved. We should want to be involved. We should want to do called us to do look at what he has done for us look at how he has given us free forgiveness look at what he did with through christ and look at how little he's asking in return he's just asking us to follow him just asking us to live our lives for him he's not asking us to give up everything in life but he's asking us to get involved he's asking us to be part of his family I wonder how many times you've heard an argument about who's going to do the dishes. I wonder how many times you've heard an argument about who's going to get their hands wet in the sink if you wash dishes the good old fashioned way, or who's going to stack and unstack the dishwasher. I wonder how many times you've heard the come back, you are part of this family, you know. We use that in everyday life. We talk about how as a family we work together. How as a family we get involved and we help each other. But yet when it comes to our church family, so often we just want to walk in and walk out. We don't want to get involved. We don't want to be challenged. We don't want to we don't want to get our hands dirty. We don't want to wash the dishes. We don't want to serve tea and coffee. We don't want to help out at something. But yet that's what being a family, being part of God's family right? And here's the thing, whenever you do, there is blessing. There is so much that you get out of it. Yes, at times it's challenging. Isaiah will face many challenges. He'll see some of those challenges. He will face opposition. But there's also blessing. But you have to start at this point. Are you willing to serve God? Are you willing to get involved? You know, when we think about that in general terms, we think about that in a family term, are we willing to serve? Are we willing to get involved? But it's more personal than that. Am I willing to serve? What am I prepared to do? How am I prepared to help out? And that's a challenge that we have to face. Because if we're going to be part of God's family, he wants us to be involved. He wants us to get our hands wet in the sink, washing the dishes. He wants us to be part of the family. Isaiah answered the call. At that stage, he didn't know really what the call was going to involve. He didn't know what was going to happen. But he stepped forward. He said, send me. 
Why did he do that? Because God freely gave him love. God freely gives you his love. How are you going to serve him? Let's pray. Father, your word is full of so many challenges. And Lord, we could read this passage again and we could see more challenges that come from it. But Lord, this morning we look at the challenge of how we serve you. How we get involved as part of your family. Lord, before that we see the challenge of whether we accept your love for us. Lord, as we, each one of us, thinks in our own circumstances about what this morning's challenge is for us, help us to answer that challenge. Help us to be honest with you. Help us to be involved. Father, thank you. Now and always, for it's in Christ's name that we pray. I'm going to invite you in a moment to stand and to sing the words of our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Morris and Stephanie are going to help us with that, so I invite you to come forward now. At the end of it, I will pronounce a benediction, and then I will ask you, just as, as normal, just to, to carefully and take your time as we leave the church through the two sides. Um, remember, tea and coffee is being served, and you're very welcome to stay for tea and coffee and enjoy the fellowship. If I can just ask that if there's anybody here this morning who is routinely involved or helps out in our creche, or anybody who wants to be involved in helping creche, if you could wait behind for just two minutes afterwards till I quickly meet with everybody, that would be great. Uh, But let us put our face masks back on again, and let us stand as we sing together the words of this lovely hymn. Can we put the first verse up on the screen? Love divine, all loves excelling, Joy of heaven to earth came down. Fix in us your humble dwelling where all your faithful mercies crown. A song which talks about that love which we have thought about this morning. The love which God freely gives to us. So let us stand. Let us worship God.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore, we pray. Amen.